I feel like Boucheron is one of the most discussed characters in Fire Emblem Engage. Not because of his design, or because he's particularly busted or anything like that, but because people just can't seem to figure out what to do with the lad. Some people express surprise that he doesn't see more use, saying that he's got a good kit with a good personal skill, while other people just can't seem to get him to work no matter what they try. But I feel I have a build that I know for a fact works very well on hard, and that I think will work well on maddening too, that will let the Boosh live up to his full potential. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. If you find this video, or any of my other content fun, educational, entertaining, anything like that, please consider subscribing. I'm a small-time creator who's making YouTube his full-time career, and I really could use all the help that I can get. Thank you. This is what I call the Brave King Boucheron build, a hero build that is a combination of a backup supporter and a player phase DPS. It makes, I think, very good use of Boucheron's good speed, dexterity, and build stats to wield the Brave Sword accurately and engage in quadruple attacks quite often. His move to Tears personal skill synergizes well with Brave weapons, adding up to plus 8 extra damage when quadding, and we're going to be leaning into that capability with this build. First off, let's talk about Boucheron's growths and what makes him kind of a weird character. So, if we look at Boucheron's base growths before we consider anything to do with his class, it's kind of an unexpected spread. We start off with a fairly standard high HP with 85% growth. But then immediately, we go into a very surprising 20% strength growth, quite low. Followed up by zero magic, which should be unsurprising. There's no bolt axe in this game. There is a hurricane axe. Boucheron's not going to be using that. But then we get a very weird spread of 50 dexterity, 45 speed, and then a relatively low 35 defense, 20 res, 15 luck, but then a respectable 20 build. So Boucheron is going to, at base, be fast and decently accurate to offset the accuracy penalties of axes, and have good build to wield heavy things, he'll have HP, but he might not be hitting as hard as you would like. When we factor in his Axe Fighter growths, it still isn't that great. He'll have a total of 110 HP, thanks to the 25 HP that Axe Fighter adds on, but only a total of 40% strength, a nice 55 dex and speed, very good, 40 defense, 20 res, 15 luck, and now 25 build. So again, we're looking at kind of a glass cannon build here, but without quite as much cannon, which is kind of not great. Fortunately, there is something that we can do to fix that without investing in energy drops and tonics and things like that. You're going to want to start off by going Berserker, and the reason for that is you're going to be seeing a very nice increase in his strength. So, once you promote to Berserker at 10, and you do want to promote at 10 so that you can get the increased growth rates that the promoted class gives, you'll be seeing 115 HP, very strong, 50 strength, and we'll talk about why that's important in a moment. Zero magic, 55 dex and speed, 40 defense, 20 res, 15 luck, and now 30 build. Not bad. Not bad. So why is this important? Well, if you're playing on hard, then you obviously want to have just as much in any given stat as you can, as it's going to be what allows you to, you know, get more stats, become stronger. It's what's good. But on maddening, which seems to be what most people are playing, and I'm going to be starting my maddening run very soon, you're looking at a fixed growth rate system. So, your growth rates are actually basically applying points to your stats, and when you get to 100 in a stat, then you get a point. With this HP, you're going to be seeing guaranteed HP every level, and around every seven or so levels, you'll get two HP, so plenty of HP to go around, Every other level, you're going to be getting strength, since you have that magical 50% strength growth. And you'll also be getting dex and speed every other level, with a little bit of an added bonus in every, what, 20 levels? Not a lot, but still. Then, of course, you'll still have fairly low defense, res, luck, etc. But a point to build every four levels is not bad. 
And this is why I feel like this is going to be a build that works well, because it'll be consistent. You can level through Berserker as far as you want to go, get Bucci's strength up, and then you're going to switch into Hero. Now, the growths in Hero are a little bit more scaled towards that dex and speed that Bucci seems to be built for. We're only switching into Hero once you've got your stats locked in. Now, why do you want to go Hero, you might ask? Well, let's look at our skills. First off, we have moved to Tears, as previously mentioned. This will grant up to plus 8 damage in combat, thanks to Brave Weapon Quad Attacks. With even one or two other backup attackers in the party, this skill will reliably increase Boucheron's damage on the regular. This is a key to Bucci's player phase DPS role. Remember, it is plus two damage per attack when an ally joins you in a chain attack. It is so good. It's incredibly strong. Next up, for the support side of this build, we have Brave Assist, and this is why we want to be in Hero. This is the level five hero skill, and it will allow Boucheron to attack twice in a chain attack if he's at full HP. This much as move to tears was key to the player phase DPS role, this is key to Bucci's player phase support role. And if you're going to be using a heavy backup attack build, you want Brave Assist on as many of your backup units as you can get. It's just going to increase your damage reliably across the board. Speaking of increasing damage reliably across the board, we have Dual Assist Plus, which allows backup units to chain attack for any player phase combat in their move range with a 70% trigger rate this is inheritable from Lucina at level 18 for a cost of 2,000 SP. And yes, that is expensive. But remember, you can pick up the base level dual assist at an earlier level for a reduced cost, and then the cost of that skill will come out of the dual assist plus skill. So you can work your way up to this. This is the end game setup here, right? You want to start building into these things as you go. Speaking of which, let's talk about Sword Power 4. This comes from Roy, and it grants attack plus 8 at a cost of minus 10 avoid when using a sword. It is inherited at level 12 for 4,000 SP, and the cost of this skill increases by 1,000 per tier. It is very pricey, I know, but the damage increase is massive when combined again with Boucheron's Brave Sword and Moved to Tears skills. Remember, this is a build where we want to get as many attacks as possible. It, it is the brave build. And when you're quadding, this skill alone will add 32 damage per attack, which is, I should not have to tell you, completely insane. Note that while losing some avoid hurts, we will have Sigurd's engrave on our brave sword to help offset this. With our base skills out of the way, what are those weapons? Well, as I mentioned, the key to this is the Brave Sword with the Sigurd Engrave. Obviously, the more refines on it you have, the better. I have plus four. Get what you can get. Sigurd grants plus one might, reduces weight, which really shouldn't be an issue thanks to Bucci's good build, but hey, you never know, and grants 20 Void, which is going to be very important when Boucheron is on the front line. That might is nice because every extra point of might on a brave weapon could equal out to plus four damage, quite strong. And you could use the Marth engrave for the extra hit and crit here, but this isn't a crit build and Boucheron isn't the tankiest, so getting the extra void from Sigurd to dodge is good. And like I said, the higher the refine, the better. You want as much damage as possible on a brave weapon to be sure that you're kicking as much ass as possible. Next up, we have a Hand Axe. No Forge or Engrave is necessary here. This is mainly going to be used to extend backup range until you have Dual Assist Plus online. Maybe you just need the occasional thrown weapon attack, but it's not the focus of the build at all. Then we have a Silver Blade with the Ike Engrave. This is only really going to be used for one purpose, which is, spoilers, Load Star Rush, because we are using Marth with this build. But the extra might from Ike's Engrave helps this out significantly. Again, the more hits you have, the more powerful each individual point of might is. Keep that in mind. Finally, we're rounding out here with the Iron Axe with a Leaf Engrave. This is mainly just a weapon triangle advantage option with high accuracy for dodgy opponents. I haven't been using it nearly as much now that I've got my Brave Sword online, but there will be times that you just really need to be able to hit something, and this axe will let you do that. Now let's move on to our emblem, which as I previously stated, is gonna be Marth. There's a number of reasons that we want Marth here, and yes, Marth is probably one of the best options on any given physical unit, so we want to use him here. Boucheron in particular wants the strength, dex, and speed so that he can get as many brave attacks as possible 
as accurately as possible, dealing as much damage as possible with each hit. This is a recurring theme throughout the build. You should be clued into this one by now. And since Boucheron wants to be in the thick of the fight anyway, being able to load star rush a key target down using that big nasty silver blade will make for quite the effective damage. What's nice is as a backup unit, Bucci is also getting plus one attack on that load star rush for again, just more damage. Marth's Rapier grants Bucci some frontline versatility against Cavaliers and armor, which will always be a pain in your behind if you're not ready for them. The Perceptive skill makes it easier to avoid attacks when attacking. Very important for a player phase glass cannon build, especially because you want to be able to avoid the attack that's coming at you when you're trying to get your quad in. The less damage you're taking here, the better. Break Defenses gives an extra attack at 50% damage if you break a foe. And of course, as we mentioned, extra attacks is good. Unyielding can help Bucci get back on his feet after a rough enemy phase if he's not quite able to dodge as much as you would like. Divine Speed grants even more extra attacks at 50% damage, and, you know, that and Break Defenses put together is basically just another whole free attack. And, as we mentioned, this is all rounded out by Lodestar Rush, giving you a big boost in damage to help finish off a nasty foe or boss. This is the top of the tree for Bucci's player phase slaying. Now, as I mentioned, this is a glass cannon build, and fortunately, we've got the cannon online now by leveling through Berserker. Bucci has good HP, but unfortunately, the rest of his defensive stats are average or below. His defense is okay, but his res and luck are really not great. As such, you will want some support and careful positioning to maximize Bucci's survivability. Talking defensive terrain from a Corrin user, or, you know, just forts and thickets and things like that. Rescue staves if you need to get him out of a bad situation. Chain guard to take some extra hits, etc., etc. It'll all be valuable tools to keep Bucci up and slang. And it'll be worth it, because, I mean, like, I've got some clips playing right now. You can see the damage output here is disgusting once you can get it going. As I discussed at the start of the video, this is theoretical in terms of maddening mode, but it should work well there, too, if my math checks out. I'll certainly be trying it in my upcoming maddening run if there's any update. If I find maybe it's not as good as I'm thinking, then I'll put out some sort of an update video, but it should work pretty well. That said, if you disagree, or if for some reason the numbers disagree, do let me know, respectfully, please, in the comments. If you try this build, I'd love to hear about it, see how it worked out for you, or if you have a spicy build of your own to suggest, I'd love to hear that as well. That said, this has been the Brave King Boucheron build. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.